Hey everyone, it's Eric Dorr here, and today we're talking about introverted extroverts and extroverted introverts. Have you ever felt like you were kind of in between on introversion and extroversion? Maybe you're an ambivert, or perhaps you're an omnivert. Okay, let's talk about the two kinds of ambiverts that we see today. Introverted extroverts and extroverted introverts. Which one are you? Now, before we get into this video, let me talk about my new online course, Self-Discovery One-on-One. I recently released a new online course packed full of content to help you learn about introverts, extroverts, intuitive sensors, the cognitive functions, and the different thinking patterns that make out our individual personalities. Learn more about yourself and learn about other people and increase your interpersonal and interpersonal intelligence, making you a master of both managing yourself and others. Personality psychology is the best tool to connect more with the world, but it's also a strategy to learn how to find flow. When people know themselves, they know what goals to pursue and what actions to take and how to organize their life for energy, motivation, and confidence. Everyone is different. Everyone's unique in their own way. So how are you unique? We know today that introversion and extroversion is a spectrum. It's not a binary scale where you're either one or the other. There's extremely extroverted individuals in the world. People that can go on forever, highly outgoing, highly confident, quick-paced, talk fast, like to be around other people almost all the time, and love to be spontaneous, to go with the flow of the moment. But we also know that there's extremely introverted individuals out there, people that are extremely calm, people that are highly consistent, stable, and planned in most things they do people that are highly modest, people that are careful to speak in a calm voice, to avoid interrupting others, and to follow a more peaceful approach. We know there's introverts that are so introvert that they spend most of the time by themselves, preferring to work on tasks and problems and work on their own, rather than collaborating with a team or a group of people, or asking other people for their opinions and thoughts. We also know that introverted individuals tend to be more likely to be sensitive, about 80% more likely to be sensitive, in fact. That means that they are more easily overwhelmed by strong sounds, smells, noises, and things happening around them. And so they love to spend more time in quiet, calm, and reflective environments. But a lot of people still feel like they're kind of in between on the scale. Perhaps they're only moderately introverted, or moderately extroverted, or perhaps they're completely on the middle. In fact, being completely on the middle is kind of rare. Most people have a preference, and even a small preference can make a difference. Yeah, if you're 5% more introverted than the average person in the world, that will still mean that you spend hundreds and hundreds of hours more by yourself compared to other people, and that still makes you very distinct from a highly extroverted or highly introverted individual. So being in the middle doesn't mean that you're some kind of unique snowflake. It just means that you're a different form or different flavor of unique altogether, right? On top of that, I found that there are two kinds of ambiverts. So let's get into what the two kinds of ambiverts are. First, introverted extroverts. Okay, so if you are on the extroverted scale, but closer to introversion or to the middle of the scale, you're going to find that most of the time you are a kind of shy extrovert. A lot of the time what seems to be the case is that these people, they tend to be the people that are quick to warm up once they are approached in a conversation. But introverted extroverts are people that tend to be a bit shy. They're not the first to introduce themselves in a group situation. And in a group they can be careful to raise their hand or to not talk over others. They're often more modest, and they can be a little bit more sensitive than the average extrovert. However, if you approach this person and start talking to them, you're going to find that they quickly open up to you, and you're going to find that they get very energized and very positive, and that they respond really well to this kind of experience. Introverted extroverts still recharge by being around other people, still enjoy having people around them, and still enjoy being in groups or taking a more spontaneous and playful approach to life. That means they're more open to new ideas, and so if you want to go in a last minute adventure with somebody, you can always come to these people and they're going to say, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it, right? It's just that they're a bit afraid to 
bring it up. They can be afraid to be the one that calls to call you. They can be afraid to assert your boundaries or to upset you or say something you didn't want or to push you into something you didn't want really like. So they want to know that you want to do it too, right? Now, what about extroverted introverts? Extroverted introverts are polar opposite. Extroverted introverts are highly assertive and super confident, but they like and prefer their own alone time, right? So what you often see with extroverted introverts is that they're on the introverted scale, leaning towards slightly more extroverted, right? So they are more introverted, but they are closer to the middle. Often what happens with these people is they say, you know, I love to go to an event and speak or I love to, you know, host a group session and I can be loud and I can be confident and I can speak out for myself in these kind of environments. But I get drained very quickly by being around other people and I still find the experience to be quite overwhelming. So I often withdraw to seek my own company. I like to plan out these kind of experiences in advance thinking of what I'm going to say and I rehearse ahead of phone calls and actions so that I know what I want to do before I do it. I tend to be quite goal-oriented and I tend to have a lot of ambition, a lot of plans and a lot of projects that put me out into the world and force me to go out and interact with and work with other people. But as soon as I can, I like to take time for myself to rest and relax and unwind afterwards. So here what you're going to find is that the extroverted introvert is a little bit of an omnivert. Somebody that switches drastically from being super social and super outgoing to being very quiet and very much in their own world, very much not wanting to interact with anyone. Yeah, these types love to work in a distraction-free environment, on their own, away from everyone else. And once they have done finished processing, thinking about something, they can go out and they can talk about that for a couple of hours and then afterwards they will retreat back to their own world where they want things to be a little bit more calm and a little bit more easy. On the other hand, the introverted extroverts, they tend to be a lot like ambiverts, people that are a bit more balanced, people that are not too loud and not too quiet, not too playful and not too crazy, but also not too in their own world and not too rigorous. Yeah, they're kind of like a balanced middle way. So yeah, those are the two forms of ambiverts. Let me know in the comments down below which one you relate to more. And thank you so much for watching.